Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank for the organizers for this nice uh, conference. Uh, my name is Ebru Cihan. I'm currently a postdoc in Enrico's group in uh, Dresden, Germany. But today, I would like to talk about uh, my previous work that I did when I was in uh, Andesh Meister's group in Gießen. So the title of this work, uh, this talk, will be Fingerprint uh, of a Structural Phase Transition During Superlibric Sliding. The main motivation of this talk will be superlibricity, and regarding this, I will and regarding this, uh, I will first discuss the different efficiency of superlibricity for crystalline and amorphous structures by showing a direct phase transition from an amorphous to a crystalline structure. And secondly, I will briefly touch on the effect of thermal relaxations on sliding friction. Uh, so, as we all know here, um, the use of atomic force microscope in friction me measurements has led to obtaining various phenomena at atomic scales, such as sticks of behavior and superlubricity. So, I would like to now um, talk about a little bit uh, about, this, uh, about the concept of this superlubricity. Superlubricity is um, the ultra low, is characterized by the ultra low friction between atomically flat and incommensurate surfaces through collective force cancellations without layer and plastic deformation during relative motion. Theoretically, if the two surfaces in contact are incommensurate, there is no interlocking state between the atoms. As a result, the atoms can slide uh, easily over each other. And in this, uh, easily over each other. And in this case, uh, if we adapt as the uh, contact area, uh, does the number of atoms at the sliding interface increases, the potential energy barrier per atom decreases. And atoms can manage to stay at a higher level of the energy barrier. As a result, it becomes easier to slide. An alternative to, to analyze superlubricity could be mm, nanoparticles with well-defined contact areas manipulated by an atomic force microscope tip on a flat substrate. And, um, and this approach has been applied for several years, both in ambient conditions, both in ambient and uh, ultra conditions uh, for further investigating the uh, interface contamination on superlubric sliding. And then, uh, the next parameter whose effect on friction needs to be investigated uh, would be temperature. And uh, I would like to now uh, talk about two main aspects regarding this uh, temperature, high temperature measurements. First, first thing, um, First thing is um, superlubricity. Um, atomic scale superlubricity is contro mainly controlled by the atomic structure of the sliding inter interface, and therefore it's important to demonstrate the different efficiency of superlubricity for amorphous, for uh, randomly ordered amorphous, and for well ordered crystalline structures. And um, we can achieve this by a direct phase transition from an amorphous to crystalline structure with the help of temperature. Secondly, uh, our second uh, assumption would be uh, possible contact aging effects in, in the high temperature region. Uh, contact aging is defined as increasing friction with time. And for the low temperature regime, it has already shown uh, that the presence of pseudo-commensurate sub-areas at the sliding interface uh, can contribute to contact aging and result in non monotonic friction behavior. Based on these results, um, we can argue that perhaps the presence of these pseudo-commensurate sub-areas uh, can be accelerated um, with high temperatures. Uh, coming back to different efficiency of superlubricity, I would like to now give an example with the help of amorphous antimony nanoparticles and crystalline gold nanoparticles. This study has already shown that 
superluminosity that will work similarly for amorphous and crystalline surfaces. But still, for uh, both types of nanoparticles, uh, friction increases sublinearly with the contact area. And this, uh, and this situation uh, can be formulated according to the number of atoms at the sliding interface number of atoms at the sliding interface. And here is the, gamma is the scaling factor for superluminic sliding. And this scaling factor should be, well, uh, should be uh, in between 0 and 0 0.5 for incommensurate crystal interfaces, depending on the shape, um, depending on the shape and orientation or the level of the commensurability between the surfaces. On the other hand, uh, the scaling factor should be well defined as 0 0.5 for amorphous structures because in this case, uh, shape and orientation don't play a role. So uh, actually this situation already shows the, that less effective superluminosity occurs for amorphous structures. Uh, nevertheless, um, this results connected, connected the um, amorphous and crystal interfaces with different contact area scaling factor for antimony and gold nanoparticles. And therefore, open questions remain about the chemical nature of the interface. Uh, chemical nature of the interface. Um, so to determine the atomic origins of superluminosity, we still need a direct transition, a direct switch of the interface uh, from amorphous and crystalline uh, without modifying its chemistry. Therefore, I'm, I'm, if we could achieve this in our experiments, that would be the fingerprint. Um, please keep that, uh, keep that word, fingerprint, in mind, because I will come back to it later. Okay. Um, we now want to make uh, nanoparticle manipulation experiments at high temperatures, because first of all, we want to see a direct transition from amorphous to crystalline structure, and antimony nanoparticles could be uh, antimony nanoparticles, which are initially amorphous as they're in deposited uh, form, could be an excellent candidate for, uh, for seeing this transition. For this purpose, we prepared samples by thermal deposition of antimony onto graphite. And uh, first, uh, of, of course, um, for providing interface, uh, clean interface conditions, uh, graphite substrates were first cleaved in air using an adhesive tape, and then they transferred directly to the UHV vacuum chamber. And after that, um, evaporation of antimony onto graphite um, process uh, have been performed at 400 degrees Celsius for five to 10 minutes. And this procedure resulted in well-defined antimony nanoparticles with atomic flat, uh, with atomic, uh, atomically flat uh, interfaces with nanoparticles and the graphite substrate. After preparation of the sample and without breaking the vacuum, the samples were then transferred to the AFM to, for, further, uh, for further manipulation experiments. And um, manipulation of nanoparticles uh, were performed, uh, were performed uh, at different temperatures between 300 Kelvin and 750 Kelvin. All manipulation experiments were performed as a three-step process. First, uh, the sample surface was imaged in non-contact mode uh, to avoid scanning-induced movement of nanoparticles, and nanoparticles suitable for manipulation was chosen. And then, AFM tip was directly placed directly next to the uh, nanoparticle, and uh, AFM operation mode switched to contact mode and then particle was pushed by the AFM tip on the graphite substrate. After manipulation, uh, AFM operation mode switched back to non-contact mode and the um, displacement of the manipulated nanoparticle was verified. And by the way, during uh, the temperature changes, uh, thermal drift was all, all the, uh, carefully compensated uh, based on continuous acquired topography images, and only when the uh, system reached thermal equilibrium, the manipulation experiment uh, was performed at the new temperature. And here is a real experimental data. Uh, here, the AFM tip gets in contact, first gets in contact with the particle at about uh, 150 nanometer, 
uh, resulting in an increase in lateral force signal, and immediately after that, a uh, particle began to slide. Okay, um, manipulation experiments, first in first set of uh, manipulation experiments uh, were performed for a group of three nanoparticles at different temperatures uh, between 300 Kelvin and 150 Kelvin. And um, in these experiments, temperature progressively increased. Temperature was progressively increased in 50 Kelvin steps, resulting in friction forces for 10 t different temperatures. And there are, these are the uh, manipulation experiments results. The, first, the very first result uh, we can see is that a very similar behavior, uh, very be similar behavior, temperature dependent behavior um, was observed for all three nanoparticles and uh, also three different regimes can be distinguished in each case. For the first, uh, as you can see from the gray background color, for the first friction transition corresponds to the, um, corresponds to the uh, phase transition of nanoscale antimony. And this regime can be extended up to 600, um, approximately 650 Kelvin. And for the second transition, we can mark the very high temperature regime with increasing friction values, um, because uh, in this temperature, um, the system, uh, because in this temperature, uh, in this temperature range, temperatures exceed the evaporation temperature of antimony at about 400 degrees Celsius and the system is approaching the liquid, solid liquid transition. Um, also here, uh, the marked lines in red and blue were calculated based on the uh, concept of thermally activated frontonism model, and these uh, different lines rep represent the different energy barriers for low and high temperature regimes. In addition to that, this red data point uh, shown here um, was recorded after the sample was cooled back from 750 Kelvin to room temperature. And interestingly, the friction uh, was found uh, a decrease, uh, was found to decrease by a factor of 1.76. Um, I would like to now uh, detail the seemingly irreversible friction behavior on this slide, and let's take a look at these two different friction traces uh, recorded at room temperature before and after uh, high temperature treatments. Again, um, I would like to uh, again I would like to say that the friction uh, a significant friction reduction can is noticeable by a factor of 1.76. However, we cannot say the same thing uh, for the shape and size of the particles. Um, apparently, they didn't change much when exposed to high temperatures. In fact, this result already suggests a mechanism um, that refers to an irreversible change at the interface. While such changes are negligible for thermal stable uh, graphite, can we talk about the phase transition uh, the phase transition of antimony. At this point, uh, literature gives us useful information about it, and because many people have studied uh, phase transitions in non-scale antimony, and accordingly, uh, temperatures above 420 Kelvin can be used as a control parameter to directly trigger phase transition in non-scale antimony. And in such a case, uh, phase transition should be naturally expected for our antimony nanoparticles uh, as well because our transition temperature, we, the transition temperatures we observed in our experiments around 450 Kelvin uh, seems to be in the right temperature range. So assuming such a phase transition, um, allows us for a more quantitative um, analysis of temperature-dependent friction. Uh, as you may remember, uh, we have previously divided this uh, friction evolution uh, with temperature into three different regimes. Let's consider these uh, three regimes again. Um, low temperature regime, 
high temperature regime and the highest temperature regime. Uh, in general, um, we explain the friction reduction friction reduction uh, by increasing uh, with increasing temperature by a thermally activated frontomiston model. And we should be able to see this effect exactly uh, when uh, the temperature is increased uh, from 300 Kelvin to 350 Kelvin. Uh, in the second range, in the 400 Kelvin to 700 uh, Kelvin range, things get a little bit complicated. Um, here, for the more or less stable friction reduction, uh, we need to take into account the phase changes of antimony in addition to the thermally activated friction reduction because we cannot ignore the effect of um, enhanced force cancellations uh, at the sliding interface which becomes more regular as a result of the amorphous crystalline phase transition. And finally, for the last highest uh, temperature regime, we should emphasize that um, these aforementioned temperatures exceed the evaporation temperature of antimony and the system approaches the, approach the uh, solid liquid transition. Uh, furthermore, we have to also consider that heating, heating the nanoparticles does not necessarily uh, result in a single crystal structure. As a consequence, uh, as a consequence, we they can they can they may allow us more structural irregularities at the sliding interface, such as grain boundaries and dislocations, which can further increase uh, friction uh, by counteracting the force cancellations. At this point, um, just a minute. Uh, at this point. Uh, I also mentioned before that this red data point also uh, refers to an irreversible interface, irreversible friction change, but at this point we are still not sure whether this irreversible friction change is caused by the phase transition itself or the exposure to the high temperatures. Therefore, uh, we made additional manipulation experiments on a freshly prepared sample to analyze the effect of high temperatures or whether the high uh, temperatures affect high temperatures uh, have an effect on the resulting irreversible friction behavior. We prepared a, pre a new sample and uh, we analyzed a group of nanoparticles at room temperature before any heat treatment. And then the sample was heated up to 500 Kelvin and another group of nanoparticles was analyzed at this temperature. After that, the sample was cooled back to room temperature and another uh, a third group of nanoparticles was analyzed here. And as a result, these uh, experiments also confirm previous observations. Namely, at the lowest temperature, friction was highest, and it decreases uh, by a factor of roughly two when the sample is heated up to 500 Kelvin. And then this friction change is found to be irreversible because more or less the same level of friction uh, is measured after cooling back to room temperature. Yeah. Uh, this experiment, uh, this results also confirm the phase transition occurs in antimony, and uh, this phase transition causes an irreversible change in friction. But also confirm that the role of interface structure without, uh, with the same material, with, with the same chemistry on superlubric friction. And lastly, if we uh, correlate this result with the scaling of scaling law of superlubricity, and if we assume that our nanoparticles are amorphous and the scaling factor for uh, amorphous structures are uh, structures uh, is fixed as 0.5 and we fixed if we fix the data if we obtain at room temperature before any heat treatment with this fixed scaling factor of 0.5 we achieve a reduced scaling factor of 0.42 with the data obtained at room temperature after heat treatment and uh, this must be attributed to the increased efficiency of force cancellation force translations after the amorphous crystalline phase transition. And this is the fingerprint that I mentioned before. Here bit. Yeah, I'm coming to an end. Yeah. So um, um, did you actually do it uh, both ways, uh, heating up and then cooling, cooling down? Cooling back, yeah. 
And when you cooled down, what happened? When we cooled down, uh, I mean, I made the temperatures after two days or three days. I mean, when I was sure that it's cooled back at room temperature, and the friction, I mean, we found that friction, friction is changed, and I mean, at room temperature before and after heat treatment, friction uh, results are not are not same. We found this. So, so. The friction was dropping when you were when we heat up, it up. It was dropping, and, and this this do? was we also find the same behavior when we uh, when, when when we cool the sample back to room temperature. Because it's surprising that it because should go amorphous; it should stay crystalline when you cool down. No, so, uh, the amorphous state is not. No, I mean in the beginning, uh, our nanoparticles were amorphous, and when we cool when we heat up this, it became uh, more or less crystalline. Right. And after this, uh, cool, uh, yeah. I'm cooling back to room temperature. Uh, we argue that the uh, nanoparticles stay crystalline. So not the friction much. should not uh, go go up, uh, up again. again. It, it does go not. up again. It, it does. It doesn't go up again. It doesn't. Okay. Any questions from the remote audience? any raised hands. So here the phase transition is induced by the increasing of temperature, temperature. basically. Do you have any idea if the sliding and the uh, heat that you uh, push into the system with the sliding tip will be enough to induce the same crystallization at some point? Because the temperature will without be locally raised. Without increasing the temperature or? Yes, without increasing the temperature too much, just by pushing the, the, uh, the particle, this will uh, um, in, in, inject some, some heat Maybe we system. can define this with the, with contact aging. I, because, I mean, the inter, uh, in the beginning, but I think, I don't know. Well, I don't think so. What uh, I mean, velocity, the speed? Uh, during the manipulation, it was several hundreds of nanometers per second. So it's rather low speed. I think it makes it likely that the heat will probably take a very long time. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we thank Abru very much. Thank you.